In this video, we're going to be exploring the north wall of the Temple of Jupiter complex. And in my last video, I, I demonstrated um, that this was a gigantic wall that was parallel to the wall of the, of the Temple of Jupiter. And um, also that it would be in a separate video where we would kind of take a more in-depth look at this wall. So that's what we're going to be doing here. If you haven't seen the last video, uh, the uh, Temple of Jupiter is a complex uh, here in Baalbek, Lebanon, and this area was attributed to the Romans. Uh, but we believe that the underlying foundation was indeed built and used uh, for, for a, a completely different reason than what is speculated. And it was built by an ancient civilization that pre-existed recorded history, which we can find monuments of this all, all over the earth. Um, and this is, happens to be another place that we do see this. It must be clear about something here is that the Temple of Jupiter and this complex is built by the Romans. And what we're talking about there is the upper portions, uh, the above the foundation and of course the pillars and of course the temples. Uh, this is all built well after the foundation was put in place. So this wall is part of the Temple of Jupiter complex that's actually not connected, sort of. And what I mean by that is it, it doesn't necessarily connect as far as it touches any of the outer walls of the Temple of Jupiter. But what it does is it connects to the foundation right to the wall or the western wall where the Trilithon resides. And you can see in the picture the northern wall to the right and its various layers. And then in the far portion of the picture you can see the western wall. And that's where the Trilithon resides, along that wall. So, you can see the size of this wall. And, you know, I'm about six foot tall. And the portion that I'm approaching here is the, what we call the second course. I'm standing on the, the first course, which is the actual ground level. At, on this side of the wall, actually, that's ground level. On the other side of the wall, this is not ground level, which we're going to see in a little while. So I'm standing on the uh, first course. You can see the second course is only, you know, it's, it's almost the size of me, maybe about five foot or so. But the, look at the upper level. That is the massive stones that are placed well above these smaller blocks. And these smaller blocks are very, very large. You can see that. So the idea that the Romans would have put these in place on top of these rocks so perfectly and the amount of men that this would have needed, uh, regardless of whatever uh, hypothetical uh, machinery that they had as far as pulleys, ropes. It's just beyond comprehension. Uh, and the reason why, you know, because if this is not attached and they didn't build upon this, then they basically just left this as it is. And the idea that this was unfinished this wall was clearly here well before the rest of the Roman structures who were built around the entire complex. There's evidence of this not only here, but around the rest of the Temple of Jupiter. And speaking of the Temple of Jupiter, that's where Anthony is standing at right now. So getting back to the wall, we can see the seam work now, again, this is limestone, so we're not talking about gra granite seams like we do in Egypt, but still, this is machining. You cannot do this with sand, water, um, the other methods that were supposedly been used by the Romans to smooth various pillars, shaping the stone for various different shapes, but here we're talking about right angles. and completely straight lines that cannot be done by handwork. So the coloring on this wall is also a mystery. The rest of the stones that we see around Baalbek, around the Temple of, of Jupiter, are brown or tan. You know, the, 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 the color that we normally see. But right there, you can see that the inside chunk that was taken out, the, the inside layer, is brown. So that, to me, 
tells me that this was a coloring or this color was done over the course of time and the local lore about that is that it was fire and you know you have to take the the local account to wherever you are because the indigenous stories of the region really hold up um, I'm not saying that it definitely was fire but you know this wall was subjected to a, a severe amount of wars over the course of time because it was on the outer perimeter and in history this was on fire at one point in time or many 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 times so you can see the length of that it runs that way and then obviously the way that I was talking about before was towards the western wall of, of the Temple of Jupiter you see the top of the Temple of Jupiter there it has never been connected to the Temple of Jupiter uh, we're going to be going on the opposite side of this wall and you'll see the actual wall of the Temple of Jupiter or, wh or what it is now of the Temple of Jupiter um, the in-between section there and that we get through by going through this hole here in which we'll be seeing in a little while but for now we are going to head over to get a look at this wall from the top standing on the Temple of Jupiter so here it is now you can see the length we're going to where it connects to the Temple of Jupiter right there and the wall of that western wall that's where I was talking about before where it actually makes a connection but it's not actually part of the foundation which I'm standing on you know that I'm standing on the temple here where the pillars are where all the um, ceremonies were the actual temple itself of this entire complex is where I'm standing on now looking down over at this northern wall and notice again the brown colorization that is underneath the uh, darker and more weathered um, color that the wall now resides in get a good look at that See, it's spotty, and that's clear evidence that that was once brown. And a little view of the landscape. It's just, it's just amazing to wonder if you can go back in time what this actually looked like when the Romans were here. This was probably a beautiful place. You can see um, in the other video that I have of, of the proof of that. But the crazy, the craziness of the foundation you know what would it have looked like when or before the Romans got here so the in-between area that I keep referring to as the in-between area that's what we're looking at now from above here and that's where we are heading my friends so there's pretty much only one way in this little area in between this wall and the temple and it's through this little cutout and I think this cutout was done well after time it's just a crude cutting um, not done to any precision and, and why would there be a hole here uh, by the ancient builders of this or before the Romans got here there was uh, no reason for that if this was some type of foundation however the hole probably was made over the course of time by one of the civilizations that occupied the area uh, well after the Romans uh, don't forget this was under many many wars through many cultures after that and fortresses were definitely built upon this entire place and pieced together as we see in that wall here right there um, different cultures put different types of stones in this entire complex so this is the in-between so there we have the, the temple wall the trilithon is against the western wall there and you know stuff strewn about stones in here now the layers you can actually see the layers from this side of the wall more than you could the other side because the other side remember we were at ground level now this is what's even lower than that and we have to take notice of these holes those holes are reminiscent of many other places that we find large very large stone blocks and a place in particular is the temple mount the huge stones that are below the temple mount and if you get a chance, uh, you can Google the images 
it's amazing to see the same patterns and the same type of holes in these gargantuan stones that are roughly the same size. And um, a quick note on the Temple Mount, uh, during the second construction, uh, Herod the Great was the apparent rebuilder. And um, the mainstream science in archaeology has uh, attributed, if it wasn't the Romans that built this platform, it was then the builders of the second Temple Mount, or the reconstruction of the temple in Herod the Great's reign. So the fact that the both places have the same construction, it's just that the timing of who is the, is the problem. Don't forget now, the first Temple Mount uh, was supposedly built by Solomon, and here we're talking a thousand years, or 950 years BC. So here we're talking about a very, very old platform in Jerusalem. And this is going, coinciding with this very, very old platform here in Baalbek. So both were built in very ancient times, well before Solomon's time. So the theory here that an ancient civilization built this platform and the Temple Mount platform is what the point is to this um, because it's similar construction that's the idea these are similar constructions in very very ancient times so if this was built in pre-diluvial times this this and the temple mount both would have been built uh, before 11,500 years ago So you can see it's very close to the temple um, of Jupiter wall and you can see the different stones that I was talking about earlier over the course of time different cultures built this uh, up as a as a fortress uh, like I said withstanding many wars and of course the layers again we have the brown stone as I mentioned before we can see a proof of that again and also the fact why would there be smaller stones under these gargantuan bigger blocks um, has always been a puzzling thing but i think due to building techniques in the ancient world earthquakes were always in the consciousness and i think this is a product of uh, less destruction from massive earthquakes and meant to stand for a very very long time and possibly meant to withstand the flood itself. There's another angle of the western wall right over there and that goes around that side. Now we're going to see that in a little while. Um, you can see the size of that and that's where the Trilithon is. So here's another view of why it well it's not connected where I'm standing but it actually is touching that wall and it's cut into it and if you know this is amazing and you know people that have been studying this for years and scientists and archaeologists if they can't realize that this wall that you see the the western wall that's straight back into the picture how it's cut around to fit over the northern wall and obviously over time, other civilizations, like I said, kept building this back up. It's been knocked down and you can see the crudeness of those stones right in that picture. Those things weren't really fitting together um, around this whole complex. They're kind of hodgepodged in. So you have to look at the, the, the underlayer, the, the, the foundation is what we are talking about. And this exterior wall and how it was used for to support uh, what the actual temple of Jupiter by the Romans and whoever whoever built that then uh, but to understand that it was pre-existing and these were in place before they got here so that they can manipulate the construction around and within this foundation so here's another view from this angle of the northern wall and right there is the western wall where the Trilithon resides and uh, this is the point where it shoots right down there's the northern wall um, looking from the western wall straight down and if you 
look at Chester. He's standing right underneath the the uh, Trilithon. And if you haven't seen my last video of the walkthrough of the entire Jupiter complex, uh, the Temple of Jupiter complex, definitely check that out. Uh, so he's underneath the Trilithon, underneath the three massive stones, um, and then you can see the layers coming to the corner, and to see that this giant block is the beginning of the northern wall side. So there you have it. A little bit more information about the northern wall. I want to thank you guys for checking this video out today. Again, there's so much fun here in Balbec. If you get a chance and the opportunity gets you here, you have to get here. If you like this type of work and are interested in finding out more about our ancient past. So definitely subscribe to this channel. Uh, catch me on Facebook as well. I post some different stuff on there. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.